Greetings to everyone. I'm Mohammed Al Dub from Kuwait, and today I'm going to talk to you about AWS Post Exploitation using the tool called PARC. So, uh, first of all, that's me, Mohammed Al Dub from Kuwait. Uh, I'm an independent security consultant in Kuwait. I worked on creating Kuwait's national infrastructure for PKI, cryptography, smart cards, authentication. So I've been there, you know, in the government kitchen doing national size uh, projects. Even though national size for Kuwait is still pretty small. Then I delivered security trainings and workshops in uh, session in, in the topics about cloud security, API security, application security, uh, and Black Hat, for example, and all around the world. Now I'm focusing on that security of APIs and uh, uh, modern cloud applications. Now, to make a long story short, before I uh, uh, I actually start, I want to share my resources. So I'd like to share my resources before I actually start. Uh, uh, th those two books have been really great in, in, in learning about AWS uh, security and AWS uh, exploitation and post-exploitation. So I do definitely recommend to check out these two books. Uh, you might oh. So <laughs> okay. So as I said, we, the, these two books are a great resource for AWS security. I do definitely recommend you check them out. And also, this is a tribute to a great friend of the AWS security community. Uh, Spencer Gates, uh, he passed away uh, uh, this year, unfortunately. Uh, Spencer did a lot to the AWS security community and did a lot to me personally in terms of AWS security research, uh, uh, answering my questions. Uh, so uh, you will be missed dearly, Spencer. And uh, Spencer is actually, Isaac actually was one of the people who worked on the uh, PACO uh, AWS post exploitation tool. So uh, now why should we attack AWS services? Because AWS is the cloud, the king of cloud services with a market share of more than like more than half of the of the market. Uh, AWS services are documented and widespread, so they run the gamut from simple stuff like S3 buckets to ground satellite stations, all the way to AWS InfiniDash. <laughs> Just kidding about the last one. Uh, so so many services in AWS, so you need to be really aware of uh, uh, how big your attack service is as far as running a AWS and AWS cloud infrastructure. Now, uh, let's talk about EC2 instances. Attacking EC2 instances is nothing special. So you attack it like you attack any other like application or server on the internet. So exploit vulnerabilities in running diamonds like RDB exploits, uh, trying to exploit applications running on top of it, especially web applications. So things like uh, OS, command, uh, OS command ejection, uh, remote, like, uh, remote file includes, SSRF, to access internal resources. However, EC2 instances can have some special properties that make attacking them a bit more special. So for example, the internal metadata service that runs in, in, in this internal uh, uh, private IB inside each, each instance can be accessed using vulnerabilities like SSRF or LFI or even remote code execution. Uh, internal metadata service can be used to expose AWS credentials for the instance that's running. And the, for example, the user data startup scripts uh, can be downloaded in order to discover sensitive data. So the user data startup script is a script that you can uh, uh, run uh, or set to bootstrap any running EC2 instance. When it starts, it runs that user data script. For example, uh, updating stuff, uh, uh, pulling the latest source code from, from GitHub, things like that. So sometimes they have uh, interesting or uh, sensitive data inside of these like credentials inside of these startup scripts. Uh, the EBS volume that's attached to the instance can be, for example, detached and reattached to an attacker-controlled EC2 instance. So an attacker, for example, could for, uh, uh, try to uh, 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 reattach that uh, instance to his, uh, uh, that uh, actually, EBS volume is like a, like a cloud uh, flash drive, like a cloud hard disk. So you can just reattach it uh, uh, or copy it and attach it to your own instance. Th then you can just browse around inside it to see what kind of interesting stuff you can find. For example, if you're running an instance, that is running Windows Active Directory, and Tucker could use that to copy the hash files into the s.dit uh, database uh, that contains all the hashes for those for that Active Directory. Interestingly, for AWS, also an uh, also a very interesting opportunity for embezzlement. So, for example, a rogue admin or maybe a compromised account could create a very expensive AMI. AMI is an Amazon image, and there there is like a marketplace for images that you can purchase. For example, any of the popular uh, uh, software uh, 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 tools that you want are also can, could potentially be available as an uh, uh, an, an image in the marketplace. So it, instead of you buying like a regular uh, license for a software, you, you actually uh, buy a subscription to use that software inside AWS. So AWS runs an instance that runs that licensed software for you. 
so you pay for AWS the, the cost of running the uh, cloud servers, and you pay for the software uh, company or the, the, the owner of that software, a license to use that uh, software. So uh, uh, you could, for example, create a very expensive AMI, AMI image and put it in the marketplace and then uh, uh, purchase that from accounts that you compromise uh, or maybe a rogue admin doing that uh, to to bill the enterprise from inside AWS itself. So as far as billing is concerned, this is coming from the, your, your monthly AWS bill. Anyway, let's talk about Bark. So Bark in Arabic means lightning you know cloud and lightning so bark is the word for in arabic for lightning uh, uh, uh the, the reason i built bark is to serve my own needs while doing cloud uh, penetration testing a cloud security consulting so uh, sometimes in, in a cloud engagement you find the aws api keys uh, somewhere for example an ssr vulnerability you find it you you, you a social engineer and uh, an admin uh, you you uh, for example uh, find it somewhere in the source code of an application or a web application at the configuration file, for example. So you obtain those ABI keys, and they can be used to attack other AWS services. For example, you can put that ABI key in your command line, and uh, or programming languages like, for example, the Boto3 SDK for Python. Anyway, I developed this toolbar to serve a, spe a specific need, which is that when you're running an EC2 instance, uh, suppose the EC2 instance is all running, and you want to have access inside it. And you don't have the uh, uh, the SSH key that was uh, uh, set for that uh, EC2 instance. How can you uh, SSH or maybe have a shell on that running instance? From the AWS API keys that you have, you can't really have like direct access to those uh, uh, running EC2 servers if you don't have the SSH key, unless you use the SSM service. Uh, which is the uh, 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 session management service inside uh, inside Amazon. That service is interesting because it exposes many uh, APIs, including an API that actually allows you to run commands inside running instances, given, of course, uh, they are running with with a, with a particular set of permissions. So instant, interestingly, uh, uh, that was a very manual process to do. So I built Bark to automate that aspect. Uh, uh, so Bark is actually uh, uh, able to dump AWS saved credentials from AWS Secrets Manager and Parameter Store, uh, remotely control EC2 instances, Linux, or Windows without having the access to, to the SSH key, and get a, for example, get them exploit meter share reverse shells or regular bash shells on EC2 instances, uh, dump metadata of EC2 instances and user data, dump Lambda code and Lambda function environmental variables. Uh, and also, if you want to play with Bark, uh, it has a training mode that allows you to test it without messing with production environment. So that's how it looks like. The training mode is uh, you just go to the to the menu inside training mode, and then you say it start. It will create like a, a temporary a role for you, an instance for you. And once it's done with the training mode, it will destroy all of these resources it created for the training mode. So you can just play with it safely without having to play with the current running instances. And of course, you can just, one of the payloads available in Bark is to run Metasploit uh, Metaprotor payloads on the uh, running EC2 servers. Uh, uh, so once, uh, for example, uh, we're going to show this one actually a live demo, uh, and also can dump uh, AWS uh, password secrets and parameters from the parameter store and the AWS secrets manager, which usually contains database passwords, keys, and interesting stuff like that. Uh, when you start running Bark, you say AWS attack surface to check what kind of stuff you have, uh, Lambda functions, AC2 instances, security groups, and then you see details about these, then you can launch further demos on them. Uh, now I'm going to show you the, the demo for Bark. So uh, let me show you my uh, 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 my Kali terminal. Hopefully that's uh, very, very, uh, 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 very, very clear. So I'm going to say to run Bark. Now Bark, we can run Bark with different options. So I'm going to show you the 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 option, the help options for Bark. Uh, of course, you know you know all the ASCII art <laughs> needed stuff. Uh, so you can run it with a profile that you currently are uh, already configured in your in your terminal, or you can uh, set a certain key ID uh, to supply the key and the secret. Uh, and the session token, for example, if you got the uh, credentials from an SSRF vulnerability on an EC2 uh, uh, instance. Now I'm going to run Bark. So now, Bark, first of all, uh, many options, EC2 attacks, uh, dumping secrets, training mode, uh, 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 and security groups, for example. But before all of that, we have to run the attack surface, uh, 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 let's say, command to check what kind of stuff we have in, the, in this target AWS account. So I'm going to say attack surface. 
but now it's going to through all of the available regions inside Amazon uh, Cloud to check all of the available instances, all of the available available uh, uh, security groups, and then once it finds anything interesting, it, should, it will show it to you. For example, this security group has the following IPs. Uh, uh, this security group allows everyone to connect, and then it will go and search for other stuff like, for example, Lambda functions, uh, 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 AC2 instances through all of the regions available. Uh, well, and of course, you jump in. is there any way you can get make that a bit larger for the people who are watching? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure. So now it's going to check uh, uh, EC2 uh, uh, instances in all regions. So, for example, this is uh, uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, uh, I think this is maybe Canada, uh, South Asia as well, maybe, or maybe, so, no, this is, I think, maybe Sao Paulo, or is it? Anyway, so it's going through all the regions now, one by one. It could take uh, uh, some time, US West too. So it's, it tries to do an extensive attack surface check on all the available uh, instances and uh, 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 resources that we have. For example, so here it found some Lambda functions. Uh, uh, here it found uh, uh, some EC2 instances running. So I can say, for example, show me all the Lambda functions. Uh, uh, now I have all my, uh, I can check the help menu. So I can check, for example, for the current security groups that are available in, in all of the regions and all of the rules. So I can check for anything that's maybe suspicious or interesting, certain IP addresses, for example. Uh, and then I can also check, for example, to dump the secrets in this account. It would also go and dump all the secrets from, from the parameter store and the secret manager from all the AWS regions. Uh, 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 then it will, if it finds anything interesting, it will post it to you and also will store it for you as a reference. So you don't have to, like, for example, check the output for this for this command all the time. Uh, uh, now, of course, uh, while it, uh, uh, it it tries to keep on running, maybe you can check some of the interesting stuff we have before. Uh, actually, it's trying to pull me down uh, all the way. So anyway, uh, uh, we will see an example of, of how we can actually run uh, uh, like uh, uh, pass a meter-operator uh, uh, payload from uh, 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 using the AWS services, the AWS Session Manager. So interesting, the AWS Session Manager is a uh, service inside Amazon itself. So as far as we are, we are concerned, this attack looks to come from inside Amazon itself, from inside the SSM service itself. That's the, the one that's actually running those commands. Now, interestingly, it found many interesting secrets inside, passwords for databases, uh, 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 API keys. Uh, of course, you can always show show what you have collected using sh the command show secrets. So it shows you all the secrets that it has found in your account. Now, let's say, for example, Lambda functions. Maybe I want to actually download a Lambda function that I have found to download its source code, check what kind of stuff it contains. So here it's going to check to me all the available Lambda functions I have. I have this Lambda function, this Lambda function, this Lambda function. I could, for example, give it a name of one of the Lambda functions to download. I'm going to say download this function to me. And then it's going to show me an address, a uh, URL that I can actually use to download stuff. So if I go, for example, and download uh, this URL, it's going to, to download. The function for me, I can just open it, try to open what kind of details it's, uh, it has inside of it. So for example, this is the actual Lambda code itself uh, that's running in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, Lambda uh, uh, function. So I can check the source code for anything interesting or, or maybe vulnerabilities so I can try to, to exploit them. Now, interestingly, going back to what we had in, 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 in our Bark tool, let's now do uh, the AC2 attacks. So I'm going to, sit to list all the instances I found, uh, and I'm going to run one of the AC2 attacks against, against all these instances. So I could, for example, target all the instances I, I have, or maybe just one of them. So I'm going to use option two. And then I can just post, or maybe tab complete, the uh, instance that I want to target based on its ID. So I'm going to target this one, it's a Linux uh, instance, and it's uh, uh, the profile, this is the profile name that's running uh, uh, under uh, inside it. So then I have many options. I can run any command I want. I can have a reverse shell. Uh, I, can I can ask it to, to visit a URL. I can download the metadata inside it. I can display a, a file. For example, if I want to run a command, I'm going to choose number uh, five. Enter the command to run, maybe who, who am I, for example. So probably it's going to run as root. And that's interesting. This, this attack runs as root. So the SSM manager inside AWS, when it pushes those commands to run on those running EC2 instances, even if you don't have the SSH key, it runs them as root. So that's uh, you know an extra privilege for you. So and, this, and the output is is root. Now let's run another attack, see if we, get, if we can get the meterpreter shell against that running instance. 
So I'm going to choose its its uh, its ID. I'm going to choose the uh, uh, number four for the Metasploit. Now it says, give me the remote IP you want to connect back to. So I'm going to give it the internal IP for my uh, uh, for my Kali for my Kali machine, and then I'm going to, the, to use the port. And then it, ha it wants to ask what kind of uh, 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 payload do you want to run. So I'm going to choose payload number one. So it's now it says if you want, you can just paste this command in your in your Kali server. But I have already my listener running. My listener is uh, is already uh, uh, ready to me. Uh, waiting for it, and that's the command that's being sent. That's the command that's being sent to the instance. So it's a it's it's a Python command to actually exploit this. Now it should be running. We should have a we should have a session in a, in a short while. Okay. So now now I'm praying that it it all works. Sessions. Okay, and we have a session. Okay. So let's check this session sessions dash i and then session number one and then we can see that we already have a session inside so i can for example maybe run some commands like ps to check all of the all of the uh, uh, processes running on that aec2 on that server uh, so uh, uh, we can see for example our uh, uh, command that actually run the, uh, the, the, the 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 payload is the ssm uh, manager that's running uh, so now it's, uh, of course, it timed out here because this is uh, this command is taking a long time to return because it's captured the, the, the session already. But otherwise, it's just going normal. So, for example, I can just, you know, uh, uh, see the help menu on my metro shell. And I can, for example, get a shell inside. So now I have a shell inside the server. Who am I? I'm root. Uh, maybe a config to check if I'm running actually inside an EC2, an EC2 server. So interestingly, that's my uh, EC2 image that's running. Uh, for example, I can uh, maybe backdoor curl against the metadata internal service, which we discussed before. Um, see if we can ask this one it responds to us. And yes, it does respond. So this is obviously an EC2 server that's actually running for us. Now, I can run other types of attack attacks. For example, I can try to uh, uh, download the uh, uh, metadata inside it, for example, or maybe ask it to uh, uh, run any command they want or a regular reverse shell. So maybe display a file to run to display the TC password file. So now it's going to, 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 to send the command to this instance and then it's going to display the file that's actually, so that obviously it worked. Now it actually launched that command to show the HC password file on that remote uh, EC2 instance, even though I don't have any access to it normally, I don't have the SSH key for that, but we're doing the access from inside AWS using the SSM uh, feature inside AWS. And even though it's a well-documented feature, many, many security admins in AWS don't know about it. So if you, uh, if, unless you actually know what you're looking for, this command will look like as if it was coming from inside AWS. So it's not coming from outside. So maybe people might not find it, you know, might not look for it properly. In, in, in their logging systems. Uh, so that's something to, to care about if you're running EC2, uh, any cloud, uh, let's say, environment. Now, if I were to run this against uh, like a bunch of EC2 instances, all of them, maybe I have like 10 EC2 instances, I can just choose number one. It will say, do you want to do this on all instances? Yes, I want. What kind of uh, thing do you want to do? I'm, I'm going to actually run the command, which is, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, cat etc uh, password. Now, it's going to run it on all on all targets, it's going to give me a command for Linux instances and for Windows because they could be they could be different. For 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 Windows, I'm going to say, for example, who am I? And then it says uh, that now it's going to launch the attack on all of them. If you want to check the results of those attacks on all of these instances, maybe ten or twenty instances, you can check the the, the command results option. So I'm going to say command Mohammed? results. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm continuously interrupting you. Apologies. Uh, it's now at uh, 39 minutes past. So just to give you okay. a heads up, so you have about five excellent. minutes. About four or five minutes uh, to go. Excellent, excellent. Yes, excellent. So now if I check the command result option, it's going to say command ID. And then for, the, for this particular instance, the command result is success. And then it's going to give me the command output. So whatever commands I can run on all of the instances that I have, it will go to it will go and the shot run that command on all of these instances, and then to go to report to me the output for that command. So obviously, uh, the bar can help you launching attacks against 
many instances at the same time or one particular instance that you want and the attacks are very uh, let's say customized you can use some of the ready ones or you can just run any command that you want by yourself so uh, in a nutshell that's what that's what uh, uh, barf is uh, i can also show you the training uh, mode but it's going to take a few minutes so otherwise that those are the ash the the, the available uh, features inside uh, uh, lambda so, uh, inside Bark so far and of course i'm going to keep on you know working on it so for example next for Barp is to do more lambda focused attacks you see in the attack where we downloaded the lambda function i'm going to add one where you can actually upload or backdoor the lambda function uh, do some persistence and backdooring to uh, add for example add a tr a utilize or maybe abuse the trust relationships between accounts or maybe uh, 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 open up some security groups and also enable third party third party model support and also a web interface api so if you'd like if you think bark is interesting to to help you in your in penetration testing inside aws maybe you can contribute at this at this at this uh, uh, url I'm, I'm not going to bite i'm going to be very 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 pleased with your contributions to bark now uh, uh, i'm finished and now it's time for questions so uh, if you have any questions i'll be more than uh, ready to uh, answer